So it's time to check out some more plugins. And today I'm looking at the STL Tonality West Ballin plugin. Uh, I'm gonna check out all the different amps and all the different sounds on it. Maybe use a few different guitars, timestamps for everything below. Um, also just wanna mention right from the start, um, this is given to me by STL Tones. They're not paying me for this video, but they gave me a copy of it in exchange. So it is still uh, what you would call a sponsored video with product placement. Um, but in the end, just use your ears and use common sense and stop whinging about all this stuff. Uh, all right, uh, Wes Borland, STL Tones. Now, uh, I'm more of a child of the 90s, but I was around in the 2000s, um, the whole new metal thing. Uh, Limp Bizkit was one of those bands. Uh, there were things about the band I really liked and things about the band I really didn't like. The main thing I didn't like about the band was Fred Durst. The main thing I liked about the band was Wes Borland. Um, quite an interesting guitar player, interesting sounds. His stage getup, uh, quite interesting as well. His choice of amps um, and his choice of effects, I, I, I liked it. I even, I always liked the look of his, he had his Yamaha hollow body, like 335 style um, signature guitar. I, I'm still to this day, I, I have a, a eBay and, and reverb search and if one would come up near me here in Australia at an affordable um, price I'd love to get my hands on one of them I always like that guitar anyway um, I'm gonna check this out today uh, gonna do a few sounds for different guitars so like I said before timestamps for everything below now um, with STL tones uh, you always basically have down the bottom here you have uh, the input gain with this little button here uh, where you can strum um, your guitar, you set what kind of uh, output level the pickups are, whether you're super high output or super low output, and it kind of finds the the the, the best level um, uh, input level for the plugin to work. Uh, we've got a gate, we've got a tuner that's right here, and you can set it to mute, which I think it should probably be set to mute. Um, you've got stomp boxes. Uh, he's got two stomp boxes which are in front of the amplifier. So you've got this mini filter, which is uh, guessing based on a, a mini Qtron by Electromonics. And you've got this big WES with this kind of interesting input impedance thing, which is, I, I like that as well, which is based on a big muff. Uh, you have the amplifier section with three amplifiers. So amplifier two, is uh, this Dietzel VH4. You've got Amplify 1, what it tells it, yeah, what it is here anyway. You've got uh, Amplify 1, which is based on a Roland Jazz Chorus with this kind of interesting headroom thing where the chorus would be. Um, and you have Amp 3, which is a Selma Zodiac 50 Mark II amplifier, which is quite an interesting looking thing with all the little switchy switches here as well. Um, but let's leave it at the Dietzel VH4 for now. Uh, then you have uh, cabinets. Now, I like how he kind of puts artwork on his cabinets. And I think what's kind of cool with this as well. So at the moment, you've got the same cabinet, the Eddy, which I guess is based on an EVH cabinet on both sides. But if you change cabinets to a different thing, uh, you can actually kind of go half, half. So you have half one cabinet, half the other cabinet, and you can blend with it. And then you can, within each cabinet, you can change to different microphones. You can move the microphones around wherever the speaker is. But I kind of like um, the idea that you can have um, two different types of cabinets. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just go back to, this is Eddie. I don't know what it is. Let's just go to that. I don't know if that's where it was, something like that. Um, and you can do the same here, and then you can change the distance, you can change uh, the angle, what you, on axis or off axis, you've got a high pass filter, low pass filter, and a resonance, which is sort of low end stuff. Um, and volume, and up here you can blend um, the two sides. So if you want both 50-50, if you want more, one cabinet more than the other. Um, yeah, uh, then we've got the post effects. So uh, kind of possibly in the effects loop or after the amp, um, we have uh, what looks like a sort of tape echo style, um, MXR style delay. You've got an old Ibanez WB7, uh, West Portland 7 uh, chorus flanger. And you've got, I guess, a DD8 uh, digital delay by Boss. Uh, then you also have MIDI like you usually do with this. So you can, if you want to use a MIDI foot controller, you can, um, uh, you can set it up there, what buttons do what. And then you've got the output gain. Up the top here, you've got all the... Um, these are all the presets that it comes with. 
you've got this to make it smaller or bigger. We're going on a bigger setting. Uh, and over here, you've got kind of your output, whether you want mono output or mono stereo. I actually want mono in stereo because there's some cool stereo stuff. And you can lock it so it doesn't change it. So this is locked now. Uh, and then you've got here, you've got, uh, you can activate your product and help kind of editor. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure you can use it as a standalone thing as well, just for recording, just to make it easier for me. I'm using it as a plugin. Um, all right, let's make some sounds. So to begin with anyway, I'm gonna probably swap guitars around a little bit, but to begin with anyway, I'm gonna use this rather lovely uh, Japanese-made um, Elemental Series Jazz Master, and there's a full video for it up here, uh, which is just lovely. I just it's in this matte white it's just such a good looking guitar um, now that goes via my peterson strobe stomp hd tuner which is always on my desk into the di input on my audient id44 interface and then straight into logic so nothing else in between it and i'm not doing any post eqing or compression or anything so it's just uh in logic it's just whatever comes out of the plugin that's what it is i'm not doing any um post production on it um, also, with uh, things like a DI input, uh, mic level input, line level input, instrument level input, impedances and all that sort of stuff, um, interfaces when you're recording direct with plugins can be a little bit confusing. So there's a video I did up here uh, where I talk about all the different um, terms and maybe may help out uh, in getting different results as well from plugging into different things. So I'm plugging into the DI input. Um, so, you yeah, um, you know now this is basically the um, default setting so this is what comes up um, standard heavy to actually let's go back to it because I change a few things standard heavy to this is the default uh, setting uh, when you first turn this on and it's like this <laughs> What I should do is I should push this and So it sets the input gain for me. It thinks it's there, it's about best. So it works with the pickups. Uh, and going back to the amp, this is a killer sounding amp. <laughs> I think it sounds really good. Uh, you've got four channels. Uh, you've got channel three. This is currently channel three. You've got channel four. Channel three is a little bit lower again. Maybe a bit darker too, travel up a bit. Uh, you've got a bright switch for that too. Actually, maybe this is where you should keep the treble where it is and just turn it. That sounds really good. And then you've got channel one, the clean channel. prefer to bright switch off in a treble up. Maybe a little bit more gain. I mean, this is super clean, but... So, I mean, just that amp gives you so many different options. And then, of course, all the EQ. Uh, you've got a volume two, you've got a resonance, uh, which is... Sorry, presence, uh, which is the, the top end in a power amp section. And you've got the depth, uh, which is resonance also sometimes, which is the low end in the power amp section. It adds that sort of extra weight and extra uh, low end frequencies to it. But I mean, just those four sounds. I think 
That's a killer amp. Now let's check out uh, amp one, Roland Jazz Chorus. So with that, you've got four inputs basically. So you've got a high and low input on this channel, which has got drive on it as well. And you've got a high and low input on this channel. So if you've got a low, it's very clean and very quiet. With a bright switch as well. Let's say super clean if you go to the high input it does start to drive almost a little bit this is actually getting very loud i'm not clipping anything um but yeah and then you've got eq or then you go into this channel i guess it's a gainier channel and you've got this kind of interesting headroom thing. So if you go, if you turn a headroom down, uh, goes into overdrive earlier. So then you get with just the volume, more gain without even turning the distortion on. It's actually quite a good sounding. I've never really used the jazz chorus. I've, I've plugged into jazz choruses before and the clean and the chorus on it is, are amazing, but, and the reverb, but I never actually tried the dirty channel on it. Um, so I, I don't know if it sounds anything like that, but that's pretty cool. I like that channel actually. Like that sort of sound is pretty cool. And then yeah, so if you turn the headroom down, As you turn headroom up, it gets cleaner and louder. I think that's a great sound. Um, that's the Jazz Chorus amp. Uh, and then let's tr uh, check out the Selma Zodiac amp. Now with that as well, you have, to, uh, you have two inputs on each channel. This one gets a bit crunchier, uh, this amp already. So that's just, there you have just those three controls. If you go into this side, again, you can go to, if you want it to be cleaner, or more distorted, you go into this one. Uh, and you've got these switches, so you go... Probably actually like the last one, but... Or the first one. <laughs> It's your first one. Again, that's a great sort of um, mild overdrive. Maybe even a little less. So between those three amps, there's lots of great sounds. I kind of almost wish that you could combine some of these amps, but I mean, that's a, you know, you could use two instances of the uh, plugin as well. Um, uh, also, let's check it. So we can try a different cabinet. So we're using the Selma thing now. So for example, we can use the uh, Zodiac combo with a dynamic microphone. So you kind of wish you could do what you can do with this, where you have the two halves of the speakers be kind of cool to have two halves of, of amplifiers. I wonder if West Borland, I, I, again, I know very little about West Borland, but uh, I wonder if he actually uses two amps at once or are they all separate amps or separate sounds or, um, yeah. But I mean, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, 
it. It's definitely a brighter cabinet. So I quite like that sound, for example. Um, or we can even, on this side, let's make it uh, the jazz chorus with a ribbon. sound before well let's try one of the other ones let's try I don't know that one I quite like that sound uh, but let's go back I reckon let's go back to oh actually let's try this one we haven't tried that one yet that one's got a lot of bottom end I reckon let's just leave it at that for now. Let's check out now uh, the pre-stomps. So this is the envelope filter. And you've got three settings. You've got a low pass filter. So what the low pass does is it keeps the low frequencies and then the, the, the quack is the high frequency. So it's, it, uh, as the filter closes, it does it ow. So it goes to the bottom, to the low frequencies. Uh, if you go. Ow. Whereas if you go to high pass, it's the opposite. It goes ow. So it closes on the. It's kind of the opposite. And then band pass is where you have, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a Y, I guess, is a band pass. <laughs> and then drive would be the sensitivity. As in a sensitivity, as in how hard you have to hit the thing for the filter to open. And Q is basically the, the, the size of the filter and where the filter sits. So if you go up further, it's a, it's a brighter filter. If you go down more, it sits more in lower frequencies. Um, I, I quite like envelope filters. Um, now let's check out uh, the big wares. Now this input impedance thing, you can kind of, there's a little thing about it. I don't know how, it's very small. I don't know if you can kind of read it on the, on your screens, but basically um, input impedance for fuzzes can be kind of interesting. Uh, and they reckon around between 10 and 20%, yeah, is where it would usually sit. But um, I think up higher, it sounds really good. So this is, this is just default setting, I guess. This is where it's in. <laughs> So with the input impedance, it goes from kind of this sort of sound. As you go up, you get more of that top end fizz. Um, so you can kind of balance it out with the tone and that. If you want a fatter, angrier fuzz, maybe go um, input and pins down, tone up, and then maybe sustain up and that sort of stuff. As you go up, it, the more and more Bs come out. So it's that high end. Combine the two. Also, actually, if you're using the filter. Lower impedance will sound better. Wow. 
Cool. Uh, I like. Uh, so these are the pre-effects. Now let's check out the post-effects. So we've got uh, this kind of um, tape echo kind of thing. <laughs> So this is the, the volume of the clean signal. That's kind of the interesting thing here. You turn it down, you only have, so it's mix really rather than volume. So it's how much clean signal you want in it. This is to sustain, so how many repeats. And it goes into sort of just about infinite. Uh, and then this is the delay time, which goes from really short, which is kind of almost flanger. Which actually sounds really cool. Because it kind of glitches a little bit as well to like super fast. to really quite a long delay. I don't know, one and a half bit seconds, two, could be somewhere between one and two seconds. Um, but I actually really like it on that sort of really, really fast. I like the sound of that. Uh, now then you have this uh, Ibanez chorus flanger, which I think I've got to get myself one of them. That sounds really cool. So you've got this kind of switch here that, you know, it goes to wacky. Um, if it's on wacky, kind of, it, it almost goes to ring modulator kind of thing when you turn the speed all the way up. <laughs> And you've got chorus and flanger settings. You can get more normal sounds too. Everything between it's a cool sounding flanger, and you've got this, um, I guess, TD8 delay with a standard setting. With an analog setting, which is a bit darker. mod setting a plus ref setting which gets rid of the clean signal and you can't you can't really bring the clean signal back so it's just uh, sort of a re reverb and delay but no clean signal uh, you have tape delay. You 
you've got a warm delay and you've got a warp delay. Um, I quite like the tape actually, that's sort of probably one of my... That's a great stereo image. Make sure to wear good headphones or good speakers and stuff like that because, yeah, that sounds really cool. And then, uh, you know, you can go back to this sort of kind of sound. sounds so good <laughs> i love the sound of this flanger chorus flanger i need to get myself one of those um second hand um the cabinet sound really cool that amp sounds killer let's add some maybe some filter <laughs> I reckon it's time for a low tuned guitar. So let's get that. All right, let's check out some low tuning stuff with this. This is Halberd, uh, uh, my rather awesome uh, parts guitar that I put together with um, Gary at Partscaster Concierge, who made this absolutely awesome walnut um, body for me. Uh, rear mounted pickups as well. So it's, it's a sleek, more sleek finish. Um, with a Robert Graves aluminium neck, uh, which is a great neck, and also Robert Graves um, third or THRD tunable harmonic resonance device um, tailpiece, where you can actually tune the strings behind the bridge. And there's a pickup for that here as well. Uh, mastery bridge and this pickup and this pickup, uh, this one's called a Drake. Um, there's a video for it here by Mr. Glenn's pickups. They're both Mr. Glenn's pickups. Killer guitar tuned to C standard tuning uh, and the same sound I had before um, sounds with a G chord like this. <laughs>
let's check the input. In, um. Okay, it's happy with that. this uh, I kind of blend that pickup in with that so all the way all the way uh, clockwise so just that pickup then there's a little notch in the middle where both of them are sort of even It's cool when you play behind a bridge. I mean, this has nothing to do with the plugin, but you play behind a bridge and then you bend the note here so you can hear the. Anyway, back to the plugin. I think let's get some more with the speakers. Let's get more. in the center um, maybe high pass filter a bit but I reckon let's go to the amps uh, let's go to now for example the the jazz chorus just that sound I like that maybe let's change the speakers maybe let's do one of them uh, the jazz combo, I don't know, with uh, with that. Maybe make the other one the Zodiac with a ribbon, I don't know. Not a ribbon, I need something brighter. Let's see if the... that sound um, that's a sort of doomy sound in it
That's cool. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, the other thing with this, actually, uh, if we go to Wacky and we turn the speed all the way up, it turns into a ring modulator, basically. We're keeping the depth and delay time down. I really like this. I think it sounds really, really cool. Um, the effects are killer. Um, uh, the choice of effects. I mean, often, you know, putting a, a, a big muff and a filter there, not a boost or some other drive. It's not the usual thing you do with kind of the heavier kind of stuff. But, I mean, you get all the, all the different drive sounds out of the three different amps. They're well-picked amps, well-picked cabinets. Uh, I really like these effects too. I really, really like that. I need to get myself an actual version of it and see if it sounds anything like it, the actual chorus flanger. Um, I like this. I think this is 
as a as a standalone thing um if you're into something a little bit more interesting quirkier sounds but you want also the heavy sounds um i think this does it all like i said the one thing if i could pick something i'd love to do what they did with the cabinets where you can have the two cabinets and then blend between that on here as well so you can have the three amps and you can blend you can take either just a one amp or you can have two amps on and then kind of blend between the two i mean i know that would be quite difficult to do probably but that's the one thing i would love to see because i think there would some killer sounds if you combine some of these amps and like i said i have no idea if he west Borland does that in in real life or not or if he uses the three amps completely separately no idea uh, and i think I, I don't know but i think i've seen something somewhere doesn't he use um evh amps as well as the jazz chorus and all that i don't know uh let me know in the comments below anyway if there's anything in particular anything else in particular you want to see with this plugin let me know in the comments and i will gladly do it because i really i genuinely really dig this plugin um i think there's some really interesting sounds on there uh big thank you to stl tones for sending this out to me and letting me have a a, a play with this also make sure to check out i'm going to put up a playlist at the end with all the stl tone stuff i've done before and i've done some um of their captures um uh, as well so links to all that below um yeah and big thank you to all you people for watching if you like what i do and what alex and i do um you know maybe just subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and a notification thing and all that sort of stuff because it does help out when it comes to us getting access to things so on that note thank you so much for watching and uh yeah there's the playlist now check out the playlist and see you in the next one bye